Hello everyone. So in this video, I will be solving vending machine version one. Uh, remember that this is going to continue from assignment number one. So you must have your assignment number one ready to complete um, the version one. So what's gonna happen here is that you already have this GUI. So you have the product label, you have the entries to enter the code and the price and the button is already there. What's going to happen is it's going to say paid Coke is dispensing. If you enter exactly 1001 as a code and price as 250, and if you click the button process, it should say paid Coke is dispensing. If you have the amount incorrect, for example, let's say the code is correct, but the amount is incorrect. In that case, it's going to say, sorry, incorrect amount or code please try again. So anything that is incorrect, for example, the code or the amount, you will get this message, okay? So let's see how can we do this. So you already have this code, which will create the GUI for you. So now it's time for our uh, process button to work. So in order to do this, uh, we are going to create a display label where we're gonna show the details when the user clicks the process button. So as you can see, I already have that display label. So this is the label. Just below the button, you can see the empty space. That's your display label. Since I don't have any text, you can see it's an empty string. That's why you don't see anything. If you write something, obviously it's gonna show up. For example, if I write the letter A, you will see the letter A. So I'm not gonna use anything right now. So we'll just leave it empty. Okay, so now it's time to code that process button. So in order to do this, we have to create a function as you remember from the previous um, tutorials. So let's call this def. Um, um, let's call this um, price calculation. So we'll check the price and give you the product. Uh, we could change the name later, but for now, let's use that name and we'll think about another name. So what's going to happen is the first thing is you have to read the product code and the insert in line. You have to read these two information, right? And then you will check if the code is 1001 and 250 or 1002 and 175 in case you want the kick out. So I'm gonna create a variable, let's call this code, or let's call this user code, since this is coming from the user. And let's call this user. So user code will be read from um, this entry, which is, uh, let's look at the entry, product price entry. Um, actually, I have the same name, so I'm going to just use uh, the code to avoid confusion. Let's just say code, and let's call this one, since I already have the variable. Um, to avoid the confusion, I'll just use the variable name code and mine. So code is going to be read from a user code. So we'll say user code dot get. So this will read whatever you're going to type as your product code and then money. Uh, we're gonna read this from user again. User amount dot get. So we got the code and we got the money. So now I have to check if the user code is 1001 and the money is 250 or not. So in order to do this, we have to create a conditional statement. So let's do that. Let me say if the code is going to be 1001. And we want to check if the money is going to be equal to uh, 250. Now, there are some problems here. If you remember the code and the money, this will be read as a string. So whatever you are going to type this get will read the data as a string. So if you say 
one zero zero one and the money is two fifty. This is an integer number, and this is going to be a float. So this will create a problem. So to avoid this, what we can do is we can use this as a string, or we can convert this um, this one as a int or float. Okay, so what we can do is when we are reading the data, the user code is going to be an integer number. So what we can do is you can use the int function here to convert the string into an int. And the user money or user amount is going to be a float because this is 250. So what you can do is you can use the float function here so that we'll not have that issue anymore. Okay, so code is going to be converted into an int and the user amount will be converted into a float. Again, anything that you are reading from an entry is a string. But we are comparing this, we are comparing this with the 1001, which is an integer number. And the money, which is a float, which is why I converted both of them. Okay, cool. So if we see the code is 1001 and the money is going to be 250, I know that the user um, wants the coke. So what we're going to say is, we're going to say paid coke is dispensing, okay? However, this message will be passed to our display label. So what we're going to do is we're going to config that display label. So display label dot config. And the text that we want to say is, we're going to say paid coke is dispensing. So you're going to say paid coke is dispensing. Okay, so that's for Coke. So I'm gonna write a comment here, Coke. And then we're gonna have the same thing for uh, KitKat. KitKat. Um, so if the user wants Coke, and this one, if the user wants KitKat. What we can do is just copy this piece of code is going to have pretty much the same thing, except that the code and amount is going to be a bit different. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to create an L, L if, instead of creating another if, and this one going to be 102, and the price is going to be 175. So if this is the case that the code is 1002 and the money is 1.75, we will config this. And I was not going to say Coke is dispensing, we'll say KitKat is dispensing. KitKat is dispensing. There we go. Now, these two are not working if it is not Coke or KitKat, if anything is wrong. So if the user does not type, uh, the code or amount correctly, then the L if, sorry, the L statement is gonna kick in. So what we're gonna say here, we're gonna say, sorry, incorrect amount or code, please try again. So we're gonna say display label dot config text. We're gonna say, okay. Sorry, incorrect amount code, try again. Okay, so if anything is wrong, if it is not 1001 or 1002, or if the money is not right, we will send them this message so they can fix their code or the amount. All right, so we're done with the function, but remember that we have to pass this function to the process button because the process button is going to check this. So if I click on the process, all these things is going to work. Right now we have the function, but obviously the function is not going to work unless you call the function. So um, the process button will call the function. So if I click the process button, it will call the price calculation. Okay. So name of the process button is just process button. Config command 
equal to the price convolution. So now let's see if the code works. It's time to test our code. So if I first type 1001 and I'm going to type 250, click on process. You can see it says paid Coke is dispensing, which is correct. If I do 1002 and 1.75, click on process. You can see it says paid KitKat is dispensing. If I do anything wrong, let's say I put a one reserve two and I'm putting, let's say $2, which is incorrect. And you can see it says, sorry, incorrect amount code, try again. Okay, so that is about the version one, which is the simpler version. Uh, we still have two more versions to work on, uh, but this is the version one. So I hope this makes sense. Thank you for watching guys, bye.